Hungry for the word of God. Okay. So we've been teaching on, on building in the spirit. And I've, this has kind of been a little bit of a drawn out series because we've had a few interruptions. But we're going to wrap this up. Maybe not today, but for sure, I think by, by next week. But I'm telling you, yeah, I pray that I pray you're building something. I'm not preaching this just so I can be preaching it. I'm preaching, what are you building in the spirit? What, what's your dreams and your visions? What are you and God doing together? If I were to ask you that, could you, could you write it down? This is what I'm building. This is, this is, you want to see the blueprint, Pastor Tim? Well, here's the blueprint. Here's a picture of it. This is what me and God are doing right now. I'm exercising faith. I see it. I desire it. God, me and God are producing this. It's going to be ever eternal fruit. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to rejoice because I'm going to see it come to pass. And it's going to be amazing because God is me and God are co-laboring together. God is working together with me. I'm a co-laborer with God, and God's a co-laborer with me. He's a big shot, but he needs a vessel to flow through, and I'm willing to be the vessel. So I'm just wondering, are, what are you building? What dreams and visions are inside of you? Come on, are you floating through life thinking, well, I don't know what I'm building. Well, without a, without a vision, the people what? Perish, because that means you're not going nowhere. You're stuck, because you if you don't have a vision, you can't build nothing. You can have all the faith in the world, Floyd, but if you don't have a vision, it can't produce nothing. You can have a faith that can move mountains, but if you're not believing for nothing, if you're not building anything, it's not producing nothing. But you've got a measure of faith. And God says, you know what? When you mix the faith with, the, with what's, what, what I've deposited inside of you, my word, my will, the kingdom of God, his plans, his purposes for your life, and you mix it together with faith, there's going to be a there's going to be a, a result and there's going to be a completion and it's going to manifest and your life is going to produce something. How many know that your life is supposed to produce something? I want my life to produce something eternal. I don't when I get to heaven. I want to. I don't want there to be no dead. You know, just get there by the skin of my teeth. I want there to be some some. Re, I, want, I want to be there. I want to look around me and say, "What? I, we did all this." I want, to, I, want to be, I want to be amazing. I want to think, wow, th you know, God, God used me in such a mighty way. And it left a, a legacy and a heritage for generations. It impacted a, a whole city, a whole state was impacted by the, what God did in, our, in Emmanuel Church, in, in Tim Lunk, in John Smith, in each one of us. God says, I want to use you for your, for your children, for your, for your grandchildren, for a nation. I want you to touch Brother, around the world, come on. I'm talking about my brother. All around the world, all around the world. He says, I'm going to use you. I'm going to bless you. Your fruitfulness is going to be worldwide. It's going to be a great harvest. Come on, Antonio. I'm talking to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, when you were, you're born again, you've got a new nature. And you know what that means? Uh, sozo. Sozo means a lot more. We think, I think for most Christians, we just miss, we're just missing the, 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 the wonder of who we really are and who God created us to be. How many Christians, they, they, they come to church and, and they, get, they, get, they get Jesus in their hearts, but they never walk in everything that they're supposed to have. I mean, they're going to heaven, praise God. They've been set free from sin, praise the Lord. Come on, they're, they're, there's, there's the love of God is put inside of them and they don't live the way they used to live. And all of that is awesome and amazing and necessary. But I want you to know, there's more than that. There's more. I want you to know, he says, forget not all of his benefits. When he died, he left an inheritance. It's called the promised land. It's called the, the, the word of God, all the promises of God. It's called everything he died for. He said, it, it belongs to you. And I'm not going to be satisfied until I see you receive it, until I see you walk in it. And, you, and when, when you do, when you start walking in it and you start looking like me, then my glory is going to be revealed in you. Come on, if you want his glory to be seen in the earth, it only happens one way. It's when I reflect him fully. The only way I can display his glory is when I look like him. When I act like him and I, when I do what he does. I can't display his glory. I can point, I can tell you about his glory. That's not the same as really displaying it. I can tell you what other people have done to display his glory. But if I'm going to display his glory without saying words. But just being the light. By reflecting him, by doing what he did, and letting 
letting him fully show himself through me. Salvation is more than just going to heaven. I mean, he says, forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all of your iniquities. Who heals all of your diseases. I need someone to say all. all. Come on, all of your diseases. I want you to know that's, that's just part of it. When, when sozo, who knows what the word sozo means? It's a word for salvation. It's sozo. It means this, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. To be completely, totally made whole. So when that's what happened when you, came, when you came a Christian. When you were born again, you stepped out of a natural life into a supernatural life. And everything that God had, he said, you not only, not only did you, are you going to heaven, but you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So everything that Jesus gets, you got. You're a joint heir. So I don't know what God has, but everything that he has, he, he gave it to me. Now, I'm going to pull up this scripture, Brother Scotty, in... Let me pull it up. I've got to find it first. Oh, yeah, here it is. Romans. Romans 8, 17. We're going to read it in, in, uh, in the, is this King James or the Passion? Scotty, is this King James or Passion? Oh, oh it's all right. Don't worry about it. It's fine. This is the Passion. Okay. It reads good in both of them. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all of his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we shall also inherit all that he is and all that he has. We will experience being what? Co-glorified with him, providing that we accept his suffering as our own. Someone say co-glorified. Co Don't let that freak you out. But that's probably pretty amazing. Glorified, glorified with him. Co-heirs, joint heirs. Jesus said, the same glory that you've given me, I've given them. Same glory. That's yours. You're a son of God walking on the earth. And you're supposed to cover the earth with the glory of the Lord through your life lived. By, by displaying the love of God, the power of God, the miracles, signs, and wonders of God everywhere you go, Come on, when you say this is a house of miracles, yes, this is, this is supposed to be a house of miracles. And we corporately, that's what we're contending for. We're contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, that by his stripes were healed. We're contending for that, that this is a place where that happens, where miracles happen. But not just Emmanuel, but each single person individually, that you're a house of miracles, that you're the temple of the living God. And wherever you go, devils flee and devils tremble and sickness leaves and people are made whole and 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 the glory of god shines wherever you go when you go to walmart the glory of god just came into walmart come on the glory of god just walked through the doors of walmart and and and, and you know what that's it doesn't got to be really awkward or weird but it but it, it can be amazing I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you some videos, not today, uh, but I will in the future. I've got some amazing videos. Some of, uh, uh, I mean, some we've seen, some we've been a part of, but I, I've seen some new ones that I'm like, oh, that's so good. I've got I to gotta show that. I mean, people coming out of wheelchair, wheelchairs, and they're wanting to like, who are you? What's in your hands? W how did you do that? Don't worry about it. It was just Jesus. He loves you. You'll never have to use that wheelchair again. Been in there for like five years, couldn't walk. I'm like, oh, so good love it i love the testimony i love the stories and i love that it, that that's who we were supposed to be amen so we're gonna work that's what we're doing here we're contending for that because we want to not only we want to we want to have that but we also probably the most important thing is we want to be a habitation for the presence of god we want the manifest presence of god and if you've been coming to the small groups you're getting you've been studying about the presence of god but we want this to be a, a habitation, not a visitation, a habitation. When you come in, into this house and the people of God are here, there's a, there's a reality of the fragrance of God, the, the, the glory of God, the, just the peace of God, the life of God just touching you. And you can experience it. And you step into a place where God is. And in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is life and life more abundantly. In his presence, demons can't stay. Amen. So anyhow, I want you to know that God wants us to walk in the promises. That we have an inheritance. An inheritance. 
He says, what did he say? He sa says, God says, I desire, brothers, brethren, above all things, that you be in what? In health and you prosper, even as your soul prospereth. I want you to know that God wants you healed. God wants you whole. God wants you walking in victory. God wants you set free. Come on. It's paid for. It's yours. And, when you, and it's, he's not okay. It's not okay that he paid for. He's pa he, there's too many Christians that have come out of Egypt. But they've never entered in the promised land. And I'm talking to all of us. I'm not pointing a finger at any, any denomination or anybody. But there's a, so many Christians are content just to stay. Uh, they got brought out of Egypt. And they're going to heaven. But they never make it into the, into the land of the milk and honey. And they never walk in the signs and wonders and miracles. And they never start walking in the promises that every one of them are yes and amen. Every single promise of God is yes and amen. And so be it. To the glory of God the Father. And he paid a high price for me to walk in it he paid a high price for you to walk in it so so it's time for us to say you know what I'm going to possess the land and I'm going to go into it and I'm going to receive my inheritance because that's what's going to glorify God he gets no glory when I stay in the wilderness I mean how does that glorify God when you have a church that produces very little but the yeah they're going to heaven but where's the light where's the glory where's the manifest reality of God walking on the earth to a people that are filled with him that are filled with his glory, filled with his spirit. The spirit of God lives inside of you. Come on, then people need to, when they come in contact with you, it should be coming in contact with Jesus. It's like Jesus walked up to them, and Jesus touched them, and as many as touched you when they grab a hold of Hayden. Come on, there should be something that comes out of you, that demons are, are, are broken, are set free, and healing manifests because they grabbed a hold of somebody that had the spirit of God inside of them, and life went out of you, and virtue went out of you, and power went out of you, and it went into that person, and they were healed and made whole come on that's the, that's what's going to glorify God that's what's going to glorify him come on I want that but I, you know he says building in the spirit I have to we have to know it's available and it's God's will people think well you're just trying to you know they get people are the devil is such a liar well you're just trying to steal God's glory are you kidding me are you kidding me well only God can do that you know so we're not even going to we're not even, even going to go there because we're just human beings and we could, you know, that's impossible. And we don't want to, people to look at us. We want people to see Jesus. And if we start walking in, in power and might and glory and dominion, then people are going to get their eyes on us. And that's just pride. And so that's, that's just false teaching. Well, you know, that's not the Bible. That's not, that's not, that's not the, the New Testament. That's not the New Testament church. Who healed this is and everyone that came was healed right. and they and they would bring people to line up on the they were hoping that just Peter's shadow would get close enough to him that they'd be healed right. and they would take handkerchiefs and piece of clothing off of the off of their uh, things that they wore because the glory of God was so full on them that if they touched the, if they touched if they happened to touch their shirt come on things would miracles would take place come on that's that's now that's you don't you, I want you to know that de the devil doesn't like that because when we start walking like that, you know what happened to Asbury? When it happened to Asbury, the, the city had to shut the thing down because all of, all of the United States, I, don't say, I, want, I want you to know I went there. Come on, I was hungry. If you're, when you're hungry, you'll, you'll do things. I hear there's bread in the house. I'm going. I hear that God's moving. Let's just check it. Let's go. I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not everyone can do that. I'm not condemning you. But you know what? When, when people from all across the country started showing up, there's a hunger for something more than dead and dry religion. There's a hunger for a move of God. And all of a sudden, I mean, I, you couldn't get in. They shut the city down. I mean, people, thousands upon tens of thousands flocked to a city. And there's, no, there's not enough food, not enough parking. The police didn't know what to do. The city didn't know what to do. And it wasn't slowing down and it wasn't stopping. And they said, you know what? We better pull the plug. We had to shut this thing down because we're not able to, to handle this. But that's what people will do when, be, when the glory of God's in the house. Right. But we're, we're to carry that here. Yeah. It's not just to be in Asbury or some other place. I, want, I, do, I believe with all my heart, Benita is going to be a showcase of the glory of God. Or I wouldn't be here. 
And hopefully you wouldn't be here. I'm believing that we're here because we believe that God has chosen us for such a time as this and Venita for a city to display the glory of God. Come on. To be a little old Benita, but God could use something that was despised and rejected and forsaken and say, you know what? I'm going to pour my glory out there because there's a people that are praying. There's a people that are hungry. There's a people that are dare to believe that they can be who I've called them to be. Amen. And you know, you know the story um, in Numbers. I'm not going to turn there, but you know Numbers. And, and, and they refused to go into the promised land. And God wasn't happy with that generation. He wasn't, it wasn't okay. And he was actually going to destroy them. And, and Moses talked God out of it. Moses said, no, God, don't destroy him. But what did God say? They, they upset God. They, God had done a lot for him. Showed him signs and wonders. Provided for him supernaturally. Just opened the Red Sea. But he said, that, I brought you out to bring you in. And you refused to go in. I'm not okay with that. It's not okay that you came out. You're just trying to use me. But you're, but you're never wanting to receive. You're never wanting to step out of. You never want to take a step of your own faith. You know, I've proved myself over and over and over. But there, takes a t there comes a time when God says, I want you to exercise some of the faith that I put inside of you. I want you to start doing things like I do them. I want you to start walking like me and doing the, doing the supernatural and doing the things that are impossible with, with man but are possible with God. And, and facing the giants because you think they're too big, but you know that I'm with you, and you're going to go in and possess the land. And, uh, and Moses said, you know, uh, actually, I am, I am going to turn there. I'm going to open my Bible and just read it right out of Numbers. Numbers 14. Give me a second to get there. We have so much on the electronic, we forget how to use our Bibles. We don't forget, but I mean... We don't use them as much because we always have it on the screen. Numbers 14. I'm going to just read starting with verse 14. And God is upset. He's upset with him. He said, that, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land for they have. And Mo, this is this is uh, Moses talking to God, trying to trying to convince God not to destroy the, the children of Israel for their for their unbelief. And he's telling God, he says, they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land for they have heard that thou art Lord that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face. I mean, these, the heathen nations have heard of the glory of God. They've heard about the manna. They've heard about the cloud that standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire by night. And now if you shall kill all this people as one man, then the nations which heard of, the, which heard of the fame of your name. Hallelujah will speak saying, because the Lord was not able to bring them in. He destroyed them in the wilderness. How many know the Lord's able to bring you in? Yes. And so he said, Lord, you know what? If you destroy them, if you destroy all this people, they're going to think you weren't able. God's not glorified when you don't inherit the promises. He's in glorified the most when you walk in all of them. And he goes down here and he said, well, you know what, I'm not, I, I, I'll spare them, but they're not going to go into the promised land. But verse 21, let's we'll start with verse 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned them, pardoned according to your word, verse 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men, verse 22, which have seen my glory and my miracles, they saw his glory. But they didn't obey. But he says, you know what? There's going to come a people that are going to go in. And as surely as I live, my glory is going to cover the earth. Because there's going to be a people who dare to believe and receive the promises of God. And they're going to see him manifest and come to life. And when they receive, when you receive the promises of God, it glorifies him. Right. It glorifies him. When you walk in all of everything he paid for, it glorifies him. Okay. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go, I'm going to kind of go right into my message. We've been talking about building in the spirit, and that's what we're doing. We're here to build something. We're here to, we're here to be co-laborers. We're here to receive our inheritance. We're here to walk in the promises of God, whatever thing that God has for your life to be. We're here to see you fulfill the plan of God for your life. 
whatever it's to be. Maybe it's to be a builder. Maybe it's to be a missionary. Maybe it's to be a pastor or a teacher or you name it, an evangelist. I don't know. Whatever it is, we're here to see you manifest fully what God has called you to be. Come on. We're not here to see you float through life. We're here to see you be the fullness of, of what God has for you. So it's building in the spirit. So number one, uh, the, so going back to, to the very beginning, number one is what? Desire. We're not going to go, I'm, I'm going to go over these really quick. It starts with desire. If you want to build together in the spirit, he'll give you the desires of your, not of your flesh, of your spirit. It's always of your spirit. Say spirit. spirit. Things that are in your heart. The desires of your heart. He will give you the desires of your heart, but you have to have a desire. The desire of the spirit. God has desires. He's put desires inside of you. So number one, desire. Number two, when you're building in the spirit, when you're going to build something with God, you have to see it. So number one is desire. Number two is what? Yeah. See it. Desire it. See it. We talked about the word imagination, the eyes of your heart. You've got to envision it. You've got to see the unseen, okay? If you're going to build something with God, you've got to have a blueprint for your faith to grab a hold of it. And you've got to see what God's showing you with dreams and visions and the picture that God is painting for your life and saying I want you to see it uh, you see yourself going to India to going to Pakistan and you see that picture and God's put that desire inside of you and you see yourself preaching and multitudes being healed and saved and set free and delivered and come on now you you can see yourself going and you're like wow I can see it happening I believe it amen, amen. and so you see it if you can't see it you can't have it that word actually is the word yetzer. It's used five times in the Old Testament for the word imagination. In, in the King James, when it says imagination, that word is yetzer, and it means to conceive or conception. So God sees your imagination as real. And we've talked about that. I'm not going to go into that. He says, whatever, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you lust, if you look at another woman to lust, you're an adulterer. Well, no, I didn't commit adultery. Yeah, you did. You imagined it in your heart. I, God says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is it. It's the reality, right? Okay, imagination. Before you ever see it on the outside, you have to first see it on the inside. The word is to conceive conception. Someone say conception. Whatever you can see, you will conceive and give birth to. I want you to think about whatever you're meditating on, whatever picture you're meditating on, you're giving, and it can be, it can be for bad or good. Now I want to show you this in James, in James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. It says, but every person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed and baited by his own evil what? Desire. What's step number one? Desire. Now I want you to know that what a, this whole thing works for the good or the bad. Building in the spirit, you can be building the, the, the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of God, right? You're either building for God or against God, working, working with, the, with the ways of the flesh or the ways of the spirit. Okay, so this, um, this, is a, this is the negative side, but you can desire your own desires and the evil desire when it has what? Oh, that's, that's, that's that next step, seeing it, imagining it, conceiving it. The evil desire when it has conceived gives what? Someone say birth. We're talking about building and birthing in the spirit. When you see it, when you desire it, and when you conceive it, and it's, you give birth to what? Sin. Next verse. And when sin is fully matured, it brings forth death. Well, that's the opposite of the, what we're wanting to conceive. We're wanting to bring forth life in the kingdom of God and to build the things that God's put in our heart. But that's just a principle to show you that you conceive things. Uh, I think in, it's in an Acts where where uh, Peter says to Ananias and Sapphira, why have you conceived in your heart this thing? And of course they died as a result. It brought forth death in them for sure. Okay. I think it was Andrew, uh, not Andrew, but uh, Clark Taylor that said, to imagine and daydream with the Holy Spirit is next door to walking in the reality of it. Amen. To imagine and daydream together with the Holy Spirit is the next you're just that close to, seeing, to walking in the, in, in the manifestation of it. But you've got to see it. You've got to see it. Amen? Amen. Okay, so ne number one is desire. Number two is see it. Number three is say it. Say it. Words are powerful and creative. If before someone sees it, someone has to say it. 
before it manifests in the natural, someone, I mean, there's no creation until God spoke. So someone's got to have faith. Faith speaks, okay? There's something about the power of the spoken word. I mean, there's life and death in your tongue. There's power. Your words carry creative power, amen? Especially when they're born of your spirit. Spirit words are powerful. Spirit or the words of the Spirit, His word in your mouth, amen, is powerful. The word of God will not return to Him void, but it will accomplish. And when His words, He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Come on, there's a, there's a speaking out what God has says. He calls those things that be not as though they were. Um, amen? So there's got their faith. I mean, the devil will say, don't speak it, because if you speak it and nothing happens, you're going to look really, really crazy. Come on, if you say something like be healed or, or cancer go or whatever it is, I mean, that, how many know that you're, you're, you're putting yourself out there? You're making a declaration. And the devil says, don't do that. Just don't say anything. Just pray quietly under your breath. <laughs> Come on, right? And what, that's what the devil, he's always like, you know, you, you, you don't, he knows the power of the word. He knows that if you'll say it, God will back you up. He confirms his word with signs following. He confirms his word in your mouth with signs following. Amen. Who will dare to believe and speak his report? Amen. Whose report will you believe? Okay, so I'm going to see if I can find some scriptures to, to go along with this. I know I've got some here. Oh, yeah, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. You all know this one by heart, but Mark eleven twenty three. 23 says whatsoever things you say do you see that one scotty mark eleven twenty three. i can find it no worries ah i got it listen to this truth i speak to you if someone says to this mountain with with great faith and having no doubt is this king james pull up in king james brother it's okay. It's all right. For I verily I say unto you that whosoever shall what? Say. say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Someone say, whatsoever he saith. Whatsoever. How many of you know that if, you, if you, you're going to have whatsoever you saith, that whatever you saith might change? You might change your vocabulary. Right. You're going you're to have whatsoever you saith. Right. I, when they said, you know what, we're going to, God brought us out here to kill us in the wilderness, and we're going to die in the wilderness. Guess what, they, guess what they got? He said, you know, he said, according as you have spoken, so it's going to be. You're going to die in the wilderness. Your children will go in, but you'll, ne you'll never see it. According to what you've said, you'll have whatever you say. He said, take no thought saying, you know, the devil will come at you with thoughts. And you've got to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every imagination, every thought captive. And don't take it. When you take it, one way you know you take it is when you start speaking it. He says, take no thought saying. When you start saying it, you've probably taken it and made it part of you. That's why when we sing songs, I'm really, uh, I, I like to make sure they line up with the word. Because I want to make sure that I'm speaking the right words every word every word matters and that's a big deal but it's a big deal okay and i'm not trying to be nitpicky but their words words are important now second corinthians 4 13 second corinthians 4 13 says this he's already got it up there I'm going to read it out of, the, out of my Bible. It says, for we having the same spirit of faith. Someone say faith. faith. As it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. And we also believe and therefore speak. Faith speaks it. So number three, one is desire, two is see it, three is speak it, declare it. S call those things that be not as though they were. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Now, I'm going to give you the negative, the negative side of this again. I, don't, I, I know that sometimes we, we, can, we, get it, we can understand it better by looking at the other, the other side of the coin and uh, seeing how this works to the negative. So let's look at James chapter 3, verses 2 through 8. 
James chapter 3, verses 2 through 8. Okay, and I'm gonna have to, that, that's I'm gonna have to have you later down the road, Scotty. We'll have to go back to a bigger font because that's probably too little for me to read unless I turn around. Dear brothers, don't be don't be eager to tell others their faults, for we all make many mistakes. And when we and when we teachers of religion who should know better do wrong, our punishment will be greater than it will be for others. Keep going. I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. If anyone can control his tongue, it proves what he has perfect control over himself. In every other way. That's a big statement. Wow. If you can control your tongue, you may have arrived. Right? We make a large horse turn around and go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants to go. I want you to know that you're, gonna, you're going wherever this is going. Whatever direction this is going, that's where you're going. Period. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and you're going to eat the fruit of it, whether you like it or not. You may not like how it tastes, but if you spoke it, you're probably going to eat it. Okay? Even though the winds are strong, even though, even though the winds are, are, are opposing him, that rudder will make that ship go right into the wind. Right? You can go right, into, uh, you can go right through the difficulty if your tongue's lined up right. You can reach your destination if your tongue's lined up right. You can get where God's wanting you to go if your tongue's lined up right. So the tongue is a small thing, but what enormous damage it can do. A great forest can be set on fire by one tiny spark, and the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of an ungodly tongue, an unborn-again person. When God got a hold of you, I think he probably got a hold of your tongue. How many people in here, your vocabulary changed when you got born again? Come on, it should have changed. Mine changed. I had a foul, a, a foul mouth. I mean, I use the Lord's name in vain. I cursed, I cussed. Uh, I don't know if, if Brother, if he remembers all that or not, but Steve, but I, at GRDA. But when I first got saved, I wasn't, I wasn't a Christian. I had a, a godly heritage, but I, 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 was, I was rude and crude and ugly. And it was about probably, I don't know, two or three years into that, my work at GRDA before I got saved. But anyhow, full of wickedness and poisons every part of the body. And the tongue is set on fire by hell itself and can turn our whole lives into a blazing flame of dis destruction and disaster. Men have trained or can train every kind of animal or bird that lives in every kind of reptile and fish. But no human being can tame the tongue. Whew. I'm telling you what, until you're born again, your life's going to be a mess. Because you can't even train your own tongue. The Holy Spirit's the only one that can bring that silly thing under subjection. Come on. And you start... He, when, he, when they were born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, they started speaking with a new tongue. Amen. But I want you to know I've got a new tongue. I don't, I don't speak curses and, and, and damnation over my marriage and my finances. Come on, I speak blessing. I speak the promises. I speak the, the, the report that this report says. It's life and life more abundantly. I'm not going to curse my body. I'm not going to curse my car. I'm not going to curse my kids. I'm going to speak life over them. Come on, you ever wonder, you ever wonder like, you, you know, you how did, my, how, did my, how did my marriage fall apart? How did my kids end up there? How did I lose my job? How did everything seem to just fall down in front of me? One word at a time. If you could go back to the very start. You ever see people that have their houses burned down? Most people don't take gasoline, pour it all over their house, and just soak everything down and throw a match on it. Now, some people do that, but that's cr criminal. I'm talking about normal people. <laughs> then, the, you know, you, you, may, you, may be, you may be wake up and your house is on fire, right? And it may, it may burn to the ground, but you, didn't, you never planned for your marriage to fall apart. You didn't plan for your kids to end up, you know, with where they're at. You didn't plan for, for all this disaster to happen around you, right? But if you could go back and if you had a good fire a, a good uh, arsenic investigator and he could go back to your house and he could look to, to the to the rubble and to the ashes and if he's a good arsenic investigator he could go back and he said right there right there's the source of the fire that cord right there that iron that got left plug in plugged in maybe it was a candle a cigarette a short in, in the wiring but he can go back and say that was a, that's a culprit well if you could go back 
to the, to the start of what burnt your house down. And that's what it says in the scripture. It just, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a flame of fire set on, set on fire by hell. And it destroys the whole, the whole thing, of the, all of life. It destroys all of everything around you. It's destructive. And if you could go back to the source, it would start right here. The devil didn't do it. You did it to yourself. Right. He used your tongue. Yeah. But you spoke it. You spoke it. Yeah. You, you said it. Wow. You did that to yourself. Amazing. You never would have planned on doing it to yourself. That's the power of your words. But now, we're, we're talking about the, the building for the good. And that's the negative, right? We're not going to be, we're not focused on that. But I want you to know, when you're building in the spirit, come on. You're going to be speaking his report, his word, his plans. You're going to call those things that be not as though they were. You're going to speak. You're going to see your kids healed. You're going to speak that you're going to see your children on fire for God. You're going to speak that they're serving God. You're going to rejoice over it. You're going to you're going to see it. You're going to see your marriage flourishing. You're going to speak life over your wife, life over your children, life over my. I lay my hands on my car and I don't say you piece of junk. I say, Father, I thank you. Come on. I say, Father, I thank you that this car is blessed. I thank you that it goes farther than, than most cars are supposed to go. And that, that, it, can, that it will go. And sometimes I'll put a mileage on it. Like this car is going to go to, two, it's, I know it's in bad shape. Lord, I'm declaring this car is going to 250,000 miles. No, I did five. I, it, my, it fell 5,000 miles short. It died at 245. Okay. And my faith is growing, okay. But I was believing for 250 and I got pretty close. Amen? Because it was in bad shape for the last hundred plus thousand miles. And I just kept driving it by the glory of God. Amen? But you'll have whatsoever you say. Speak his report. Okay? So if you're going to walk by faith, you're going to have to act a little bit out of the ordinary. You're going to have to say things that people are going to be like, who do you think you are? You're, you're Abram. You have no kids. Zero. And you know what? You're getting, you're getting up there in years probably not going to have any kids he said no wait a minute that's not who i am i've got a new name my name's abraham abraham you call me next time you you call me on the phone you get my name right i want you to know god says my name's abraham and if god says my name's abraham that settles it my name's abraham i'm a father of many nations and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak it. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to call those things that be not as though they were. I'm not going to back off of it. Come on. I'm going to speak it. Keep speaking it. Doesn't look like it's changing. 16 years later, my name's still Abraham. My name's still Abraham. I'm wondering how much faith that took. My name's still Abraham. I'm not letting go of it. It's mine. God, I believe you. I believe you. I thank you. I thank you. I see the stars. I see the stars up there. My name's Abraham. Abram. Abraham. Father of many nations. Wow. He received, the, he received it. Amen. He didn't let go of it. He received it. Speak, speak, speak. I was thinking I'm going to pull up a, a scripture in Joshua. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 through 14. Joshua chapter 10 Take some boldness to be a to, man, be, to be a per person of faith. It takes some courage. Amen It takes someone who dares to believe and dares to speak it when everyone else says you know what? I wouldn't say that if I was you Hey, if, it, if it's if it's in this report or if it's something that God's put in your heart And you know, it's a, a it's a desire of the Holy Spirit that's been put there by God Then you better start speaking it you better start prophesying it. You better say, you know, I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to speak over it. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to build it. I'm going to birth it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a creator with God and, and, and see the things manifest because I'm going to continue to speak the word of the Lord. So Joshua, Joshua. And Joshua returned and all of Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. Is this the right verse? Joshua 10, 12 through 14. You're good. Joshua 10. Then the Lord, sp then spake Joshua to the Lord. Oh, I like this. I mean, you know what? God is just so good. If you're his servant and you're his child, he just, he'll, he'll, he'll even honor your word. 
Now, he puts his word inside of you. But he said, he, 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 it talks about Samuel. It says, and not, God didn't allow one word that Samuel spoke to fall to the ground. It, it, per, every time he spoke, it produced something. Now, if he said, you're going to die, you're going to die. Period. Not one word fell to the ground. But he said, if you're going to live, you're going to live. He said, you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a baby. Amen? But then God, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, and I love this, this is Joshua. He didn't say it privately under the covers. Like, okay, God, let's do this. <laughs> he said in the sight of all of Israel. Now, this is what, uh, this is what faith will do. I'm telling you. Faith, he said, son, anybody want to try this? Stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajon, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Now what would have happened if he wouldn't have said that? It wouldn't have happened. Before someone sees it, someone has to speak it. Will you, be the, will you be the person that speaks it? Will you speak his report, his word, his will, his plan for your life? Will you speak it? Will you desire it? Will you see it? Will you speak it? Going to the next point, okay? Number three is speak it, amen? All right, now this is a point that, I, that we're going to. This is where we really haven't touched on this yet. Number four is receive it. When you're building in the spirit, desire it, see it, speak it, and receive it. Now, there's one more point after this. I may not, get, probably won't get to it today, but I want to get to this one. Now, Mark 11, 24. Let's just read 23 and 24 together because it's all in the same place. Mark 11, 23 and 24. Verily, verily, I, I say unto you that whoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and shall cast and be cast thou into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, he shall, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, that he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, someone say therefore. therefore. So it's, it's talking about speaking to your mountain, say to your mountain, and believe that those things you say will come to pass. You'll have whatever he'll say. Now, let me get, I'm having a hard time reading it. Let me just read out of my own, my own, my own uh, book right here, the Bible right in front of me. I'm read it one more time. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall, someone say shall, yeah. believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now this verse is just almost the same verse, the same thing as the next verse. It's saying the same thing, but a little bit differently. But the, it says, whatever you believe, every, whatever you say shall come to pass, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. You're going to believe that those things that you're saying shall come to pass. That means you'll have whatever you say. Okay, did you get that? Say, I believe. That those things that, that, I say that I say shall come to pass. And if you believe that, you'll have it. Okay? Now, verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what sort of things you desire when you pray, when you speak. Because it's talking about speaking. It's talking about saying. It's talking about praying. These are all vocal, vocal things. What sort of things you desire when you pray. Believe that you what? Re that you have received them and you shall have them okay so when do you when do you receive them do you receive them when you when you when it shows up on, when it shows up uh, on the doorstep do you receive it when the fever breaks when the pain goes away when do you when do you receive the things of god when you believe when you pray when you ask when you when you pray you believe you received it as soon as you believed it, you've received it. Okay? And faith is always now. The devil loves for you to talk about the past and the future. It'll happen tomorrow. 
One of these days, God's going to touch me. One of these days, God's going to heal me. No, you're going to be waiting a long time. You'll be waiting a really long time. I mean, a really long time. He's not going to heal you. I want you to know that he has healed you. He, that package was paid for in full 2,000 years ago, and it was deposited on your doorstep, and all it takes for you to do is open the door and pick up the package and, and, and say, oh, there it is. I receive it today. When you, say, when you start saying today, I receive it today, that's where things start happening. You want to see signs and wonders and miracles? It's when you step out of the past or the future and you step into the now. It happens now. When I say pain go now, that's that I'm saying now because I have a I'm I'm not believing that's gonna you know I'm believing that it, what does it does it matter if it goes now? No, it doesn't matter. It's I receive it now, and because I receive it, it's finished. Right. Come on, it may not manifest tomorrow, it may not manifest next week, but it, but I received it the moment I believed it. Now, I want you to catch this. When you, when you pray, believe you have received it, and then you shall have it. How long does that, will that be? I believed it over here. I believed I received it. And he said, somewhere, somewhere in, in, in this place of time, you're going to receive it. Believe you have received it, and you're going to have it. You're going to see the manifest, the birth of it. Okay? So when, when does a woman receive a child? When she gives birth to it? When she receives the seed inside of her. Okay. Can, can you see it with your eyes? Can other people see it? Th does, she have a, does, she have a, does she have a child? Does she, is she pregnant? Is it real? Is it alive? Is it manifested yet? No, it's hidden underneath the surface. But it's real. And it's inside of her. And it's just as if she already had it. She's already making plans. As if it was already here. She's picturing what the first birthday, the second birthday. I mean, she's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a reality to her. It may, you may not see it yet. You may not be rejoicing yet. But inside of her, she knows that she's received it. And it's, it's growing inside of her. It's going to come to pass. Because not one word of God can ever fail to happen. And if the seed of God's word gets inside of my heart. And it gets mixed with faith. That when the word and faith come together. There's a conception. And not one word of God will ever fail. Because it's an incorruptible seed. There's not one bad. There's, you know, when you get a package of seeds at Walmart, there might be two or three seeds that doesn't, they don't grow. I mean, maybe 90% will grow and 10% are dormant. That's with God's word, it's 100%. Every, every word of God is perfectly, will come to pass. Not one word of God will ever fail. And if you mix faith with one word of, with one of God's word, there's a conception and it's producing something inside of you and you're going to give birth to it. It's yours already. I don't care if you don't see it yet. I don't care if anybody else sees it yet. It belongs to you and you can start getting ex excited about it because it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It can't fail to come. It can't fail to come. It's Heaven and earth will pass away before that, will not, that won't happen. I mean, it would be impossible if, for one word of God to fail. Because he built everything on his word. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen? Okay, well, I'm, I'm winding down. We'll see how far we're now. I'm, I'm going farther than I thought it would, but that's good. I'm glad. Praise the Lord. I receive it now, now, now. Not one, of these, not one of these days, the moment you believe, conception takes place. The moment you believe. I love what T.L. Osborne said. He said after preaching for three or four hours, he would tell the congregation, he'd say, many of you are waiting for me to get done preaching so you can receive your healing. But I'm waiting on you to receive your healing so I can get done preaching. You're, they're waiting. It's like, would you get done preaching so I could get healed? He's like, no, I'm waiting for you to get healed so I can quit. You can receive it. Faith is now. I, I wanted to say, whatever, whatever things you're desiring right now in your heart, if you'll just receive it now, it can, it can be already like, you can be impregnated with it right now, and it's yours now, and you can receive your healing right now. You can receive what you're, whatever you're building, whatever you're desiring, whatever things are in your heart. I want you to know, you can receive it right now. Whatever breakthrough you're, you're, you're wanting to see in your family, in your finances, you receive it now. In your health, in your, in your healing, receive it right now. It's yours now. It's yours now. So today is a day of salvation. Don't put it off to tomorrow. 
I, I receive it now. When you pray, believe you received it. I've already prayed. I've already spoke it. I believed I received it now. It's mine now. I, I have it now. And then you know what? You don't doubt. You don't get double-minded. You don't let the mind of the flesh kick in and talk you out of it. You stay in faith. Come on, you hold fast. I remember when I, that I had a job at GRDA, and Steve can tell you the story, and I've told it a few times here. It was a 0% chance of the guy that was doing the hiring over GRDA said, Tim, 0%. But I had a word from God, and God said, Tim, I'm in this. You trust me. And boy, I tell you what, you talk about exercising faith. I had to exercise faith. They tried to fill that job for a year, and I would never let go of it. I said, by faith. People would say, what about that? I said, by faith, that's my job. Amen. I'd say, by faith, it's mine. That's what my exact words to unbelievers. By faith, that's my job. I was giving glory to God because they're going to see God manifest through that testimony. They'd say, oh, no, 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 no. You're never going to get that job. That's what I'd hear. Even people, my, my coworkers, you're never going to get that job. They've got people that are lined up that know so-and-so, and they know so-and-so, and that job's not yours. I say by faith, that's my job. I'd heard, but I'd heard the I'd heard, heard the voice of God, uh, truly, so loud and so clear. Probably one of five times I've ever heard God speak that loud and that clear in my entire life. And, uh, but it was it still was a test of faith, even though I heard God that loud and that clear. And, uh, and long story short, the same God that said zero percent chance a year later called me back in his office. We just can't fill this job. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So who knows the story of the fig tree? I'm not going to read this to you, but this is kind of the same principle. Jesus looks at the fig tree that was supposed to have figs on it, and he says, you know what? You're dead. That's it. You're dead. Did the fig tree look any different? No. Nothing changed. They all walked away. Did Jesus doubt his words? No. He, wasn't, he knew it was dead. The fig tree knew it was dead. Jesus knew it was dead. But nobody else knew it was dead. Come on. You know you're pregnant. God knows you're pregnant. Nobody else might know you're pregnant. But underneath, underneath the soil, the roots already started shriveling up. Dead. Next day they come by. They're like, what in the world happened to that tree? Jesus said, what? Oh, you have faith in God. And then the next verse is Mark eleven twenty three and 24. What, so speak to your mountain. What, you'll have whatever you say if you don't doubt it. And but you believe it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Therefore, when you pray, believe you have received it and you shall have it. Amen. Now, we're going to wind up with this. In the natural, when you believe you receive something, let's say you just got, let's say you're, you've been waiting for this like for a long time. You've been trying to have a baby for a while for like forever i'm just using this for an example and you get the you get the results back and it's the confirmation you're going to have a baby you just you know you're pregnant you're pregnant you're you're actually six months pregnant six weeks pregnant six weeks pregnant guess what you're you've conceived a baby you're pregnant okay but you've been waiting for this for 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 maybe four or five six years to hear them words i'm pregnant i'm i've got this baby that this desire of my heart <coughs> excuse me and now that you're, you, get the, you get the confirmation, the doctor's report says you're, you're pregnant. And you know what? You're just like bouncing off the walls. You can't wait to tell your, your parents, your siblings, your coworkers. You want, you mean, you're just like busting at the seams. I'm pregnant. I mean, is that anybody ever? I would think so. If something you've been longing for and desiring for and you get a report, maybe you've been fighting cancer and you get, you get the report that says, you know what, we, we've tested you and there's not a trace of cancer left in your body. You are cancer free. Come on. And all of a sudden you just can't wait to shout, I'm free, I'm healed, I'm, come on, I'm, I'm, it's done, it's finished. Okay. What I'm saying is that same, that same way that you feel right there God's saying, I want, you to, I want you to have that joy and that excitement before it happens. Because you've received it by faith. And if you really believe it, that it's yours, then act like it's yours. Act like you've received it. 
Act like you got that promotion. Act, I mean, don't wait till it, till it manifests. Start rejoicing. like Because it says, if you believe you already have it, then why wouldn't you just be excited about it? Why wouldn't you be like rejoicing? I, don't, I know you don't see it yet, but I know it's mine because my dad said it's mine. I know it belongs to me because he can't lie. And he promised me. And this is what he, healing is mine. Victory is mine. Whatever it is, I'm believing for my marriage. I'm believing for, for, for breakthrough in my finances. I'm believing for a breakthrough in Benita. Come on, me and Donna, we do this on a regular basis. Now, it's easy to get back in the flesh and, 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 and let the enemy just try to steal that joy. You got to stay in a place of joy and, and excitement because you see what he sees. And even though the promise tarries, you know what? You wait for it, for it will surely come. Through faith and patience, you're going to inherit the promises of God. You, you're going to receive the fullness of what you're believing for, and that's going to be better than what you thought. When you get it, it's going to be better. He said he'll do abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. So whatever you think it's going to be, it's going to be better than that. So just start getting excited now. Let's start getting excited. Someone say now. So look at Romans. My last verse, Romans 4, 19 through 21. Romans 4. 19 through 21. Talk about Abraham. Waited 16 years for a baby. Called himself Abraham. Father of many nations. When he was 100 years old. And it was impossible. His body was as good as dead. Wow. Come on. But it says he. Verse, four, verse 18. Verse 17. Well you can keep going all the way back. It's all good. Verse 17, as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were, whom against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall, I, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. And he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was, I like, I think it says the uh, Amplified says, was, was strengthened and made strong in faith. But it says, uh, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Let's read it in this translation here. It says, but was strengthened in faith. Someone say strengthened. Amen. Giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Come on. It's not about just the word. It's about, this is, this is your, your picture of who God is. If he, gave you a, if he gave you a promise and he's faithful and true, then you can, you can rejoice. And you know what? Through faith, it surely will manifest. It surely will. If you, you're, you'll receive if you don't faint. You will receive if you don't faint. If you don't faint. Hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. In due season, you shall reap if you don't faint. It's a big if. If you don't faint, how many people quit before it showed up? In due season, I'm going to reap if I don't faint. Sixteen years later, he, re he, he, he reaped a son. Isaac showed up. Laughter. His, his, come on, it was turned to laughter. Now, this is, this is it. We're, we're, we're going to do this. Let's all stand up. We're gonna, I want you to see what, whatever you're believing God for. If you're not believing God for nothing, then ask God to give you a dream or a vision or something that you're, that you're believing for. But I think all of us have got dreams and visions and hopes and desires that the Holy Spirit has, has put inside of us. And when you see it, I know I've got, I've got a dream and a desire for Emmanuel, for Benita. I've got me and Donna, we pray over it. We have a vision board that we lay our hands on on a regular basis and we speak over it. We, start, we see the glory of God manifesting. We see how people just filling the house, the hunger of God, just families flooding in. We see, we see uh, th that every place that we have needs is, is fully met. There's nothing lacking. That every department, every, every leader has got a team that, that, is, that is on fire, excellent. And, and, and walking in sync with the kingdom of God, the plan of God. And we call in the finances. We call in the, the laborers. And we just build this thing with God. We're building, a, we're building the, the church, but God's building it. But we're co-laboring with him. And we're calling those things in. But whatever things you're desiring in your family, whatever things you're desiring for Vanita, for this church, I want you to just picture it right now. So number one, desire it. Number two, see it. Number three, say it. Number four, well, what is number four? My, my mind already slipped. 
Number four, receive it. Come on, thank you, receive it. Number five is don't doubt it. Okay, receive it. I believe I receive it now. So I want, we're going we're gonna to just, gonna, I want you to picture it. Maybe it's something with your child. Maybe it's something with your marriage. Maybe it's something with your job. Maybe it's something with your health. I want you to picture that thing as though you just got the report back that it, it, was, it was finished and totally complete, totally healed, totally restored, totally whatever it is that you just got the report that you got the promotion. You got, you, come on, whatever it is, I want you just to start seeing it. And I want to lift up a praise right now. I want us to praise God because what happens in the natural when you receive a, a gift that's so amazing uh, that only God can do? You're, you're just jumping for joy. And I'm just telling you what, it's time to get your joy level up a little higher. Because you've, if you've received it, then, then let's, let's put some faith behind what we receive. And I, let's just lift up our voices right now. I want, to sh- I want to do some shouting in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for the victory. I thank you, for the Father, for the salvations. I thank you, Lord, Father, for the increase, for the harvest, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for finances. I thank you, Lord, for families. I thank you, Lord, for the kingdom of God manifesting here in Venita. I thank you, for it, Lord, for salvation in these waters. Hallelujah. Father, for salvation and breakthrough in these waters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory for signs and wonders and miracles that are going to take place, Father God. Oh, the have to, oh, we receive it now, Lord God. We receive breakthrough. We receive the fullness, Lord God. We receive the, Father, the completeness of everything that you paid for. It is finished. And, Lord, I receive it, Lord. I'm, going to, I'm walking in it. I'm going to eat the fruit of the, of the land, Father God. I'm going to walk in signs and wonders and miracles. They belong to me. Hallelujah. I'm going to, I heal the sick. I raise the dead. I cast out devils. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you, Lord God. Wherever I go, you go, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, the light of God shines through me. I'm more than a conqueror. My children are blessed. My, fi- my family's blessed. Hallelujah. My grandchildren are blessed. Oh, Lord, life, Lord God, is flowing into all of my family. Lord, salvation belongs to my family. Hallelujah. My loved ones are being saved. Hallelujah. Set free in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for Benita. Hallelujah. Lord, the light of the glory of God is impacting my city. It's impacting this city. People will come from all around the world to, because the fame of your name has come out of Benita. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord has risen upon Benita. Thank you, Jesus. We receive the glory of the Lord, Father, for this generation. Father, let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified, Father, in your people here in Vanita. Oh, Lord, let there be, Father, a sound that goes out of Vanita that resonates around the world, Father, for the glory in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Vanita, Vanita, Vanita. Everyone's heard of Vanita. Praise the Lord because Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. So be it. So be it, Father God. Father, we receive the fullness of our inheritance. When we we believe we receive those things that we desire of you. Your heart's desire that's been put in our hearts. Father, we receive it. And I come against all doubt, all unbelief. We give you no place. All the mind of the the mind of the flesh, you have no place. We're not going to be double-minded, walking after the flesh, and walking after the spirit. We're going to stay walking after the spirit. The mind of Christ that says all the promises are yes and amen and they're finished and they're mine and I'm not letting go and I'm going to see them come to birth. Come to birth. Come to birth for the glory of God. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Okay. Well, God bless you. Love you. And you're dismissed. There's a world that's longing for